So today we know that Buddhism is a very important religion, right? And it was started or founded by Gautama Buddha. But how did he spread his teachings all throughout the world? Well, let's find out. You see, after Buddha's death or Parinirvana, there were a lot of questions, confusions and disputes that occurred in the Buddhist sutras. And these arose amongst the various followers of Buddhism. So what happened after this? Well, after this, to settle the questions and the disputes that had emerged, many gatherings took place. And these gatherings got a name and these were called councils. And these councils were so important that people from across the world attended these gatherings. Now, one of these council meetings was the fourth Buddhist council, which was held around 1900 years ago in Kashmir. Now, why was this particular Buddhist council so important? This was important because it was during this council that Buddhism suffered a split. So, it was split into two. One of these was Mahayana Buddhism, the other one was Theravada Buddhism. So, Theravada Buddhism was the older form of Buddhism, the one that was founded by Gautam Buddha himself. And this Mahayana Buddhism was the newer form. So, now let's try to understand the difference. But first, let's take a look at this picture. In with this, you can see Emperor Kanishka inaugurating Mahayana Buddhism. So, now let's see what these exactly are. Well, so we can see from this chart here that Buddhism suffered a split into Mahayana and Theravada. And so, Theravada Buddhism further spread to Sri Lanka, which you can see here, Thailand, Myanmar, amongst various other countries. So now, some of the characteristics of Mahayana Buddhism, which was the newer form of Buddhism that came to us after the fourth Buddhist council was that all the texts that were now written were in Sanskrit language. So this Sanskrit language was not used by Buddha because Sanskrit was used by richer people and instead Prakrit or Pali, these were the common languages for the common people, right? And so Buddha used to preach in them. However, when Mahayana Buddhism came, there was a new trend. So, Kanishka's court poet, whose name was Ashwaghosha, well, he started writing these Buddhist texts in Sanskrit language. Along with, there were also other people who were writing. So, all of these new texts that came in Buddhism, in Mahayana Buddhism, were written in Sanskrit instead of Prakrit. So, before this, the concept of idol worshipping was not present in Buddhism. So, they used to symbolize various things. For example, for Buddha's enlightenment or Nirvana, they used to symbolize it as a people or a Bodhi tree because it was sitting under a Bodhi tree that Buddha attained Nirvana, right? So they used to symbolize various different things from Buddha's life. And so the concept of idol worshipping per se was not there, but it began in Mahayana Buddhism. And so many Buddha statues were made mainly in Mathura and Taksila. Another important thing is that the along with Buddha's statues being made and idol worshipping starting, what happened is that the worshipping of the Bodhisattvas also became very popular. Where did it become very popular? Well, it became very popular throughout Central Asia uh, and other countries like China, Korea and later even Japan. So, what or who basically are these Bodhisattvas? These are people who can attain nirvana however they delay it they delay it in order to help other people out so they are also very important people and so common people following buddhism started worshipping such bodhisattvas buddhism also spread from here starting from this point it also spread to western india as well as to southern india india and even countries like sri lanka And now, so, so many people were now traveling to Western India and Southern India and other places to spread the religion, right? So, so many monks, when they were traveling, they needed a place to stay, right? So, where would they stay? Will they stay in temporary shelters or something of that sort? No. Well, for them, caves were hollowed out of such hills, which you can see from this picture, for monks to live in. This picture here, in fact, has been taken from Ajanta Caves. And you can see here how such hills have been hollowed out and inside there is space. So, the monks used to live in them, right? 
So now, where exactly were these caves located? Well, they were often located near passes in the western ghats. Why? This was so that the roads connecting prosperous ports, because you people used to trade and travel using ships back then, right? So ports were very important communication points. So the roads that were connecting such ports on the coast with the cities ran through these passes. So these passes near which the caves were built, they were so close to the ports, right? And so the traders who were going, who were traveling for various different reasons, they probably halted or stopped in these caves in these cave monasteries and they saw how these monks were living, right? So when they were stopping there, when they were living with them, they saw how these monks were really religious and how they were leading their lives. So these traders were probably inspired by the religion of these monks and maybe, maybe that is also how Buddhism further spread. So from all of that, we can understand that Buddhism was founded by Gautama Buddha more than 2500 years ago. But it does not mean that with the end of Gautama Buddha came the end of this religion. No, in fact, this religion went on and spread throughout so many different countries such as Bhutan, Myanmar, Cambodia, Nepal, Vietnam and many such countries. In fact, today it is the fourth largest religion in the entire world and people all across the globe follow it. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. You can also register for free on deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app and get easy access to more than 5000 amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock tests. Get all your doubts resolved instantly. Learn via games and get a chance to win amazing prizes like playstations and ipads so at delta step learning is not just fun and easy it's rewarding too so register for free now